This is of course what's happening in Pakistan. Beleaguer Pakistani Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani reached the Supreme Court just about 45 minutes or an hour before to respond to a content notice issued to him on failing to reopen graft cases against the President Asif Ali Zartari. Now the Prime Minister Gilani told the court he respected the judiciary and had served a jail term earlier on. Gilani however told the court that the Presidents worldwide enjoy immunity and so did the Pakistani President under the President present constitution. Gilani appeared before a seven-judge uh, bench headed by Justice uh, Nasir ul Mulk. Top cabinet ministers from his government accompanied him to court and there was high security at the court premises with a three-tier security cover in court. And tracking all these developments very closely is NDTV's group editor Barkha Dat. She joins us on the phone line now. Barkha, uh, some interesting comments uh, by the Prime Minister. Of course, a very desperate attempt to explain himself, saying that presidents around the world enjoy immunity and the Pakistan constitution also gives the president immunity. Well, I think uh, what you're seeing in the very dramatic appearance by Pakistan's Prime Minister before the country's highest court is a combination of trying to assert political strength on the one hand, but also trying to strike a note of conciliation on the other. I would actually not call it a desperate attempt. I think it seems like a well-thought-out strategy. I think the strategy seems to be that right from the beginning, remember, this is the Prime Minister who went into court having won that vote of confidence just a few days ago uh, in, in Parliament where he was trying to assert the supremacy of Parliament over all other institutions. Now, interestingly, uh, when the Prime Minister uh, walked into court today, he had driven uh, himself, uh, he drove his own car to court, he got out to the hordes of uh, media people eating with most of his cabinet uh, standing side by side with him, uh, greeted by Interior Minister Rehman Malik, who had already said in an interview to us uh, that the government is going to last its full term and uh, that he, he is confident the Prime Minister will not have to resign. The Prime Minister got out and waved to the waiting media, smiled, tried to present a confident face and then walked 30 steps up into court number four, which is ironically also next. Uh, to Parliament. The symbolism, is, the symbolism is important, of course, because in the end, uh, this is a tussle in Pakistan before all of these institutions, the Parliament, the military, and the judiciary. Thereafter, while many people have believed that the Prime Minister would have no option but to eventually accept the Supreme Court's orders to reopen an old corruption case against the President, Asif Ali Zatari, so what we hear right now from the arguments being made in court the Prime Minister of Pakistan is trying to strike a note of conciliation as far as the contempt notice is concerned, making a statement in court saying he means no disrespect to the judiciary, he was not reluctant to appear before it, talking about how he has previously spent uh, six months uh, in jail, but at the same time also explaining to the court the reason he did not write the letter as directed by the court to Swiss authorities, reopening that old case against President Zadari is because he... Uh, is, is given to believe that under the law the president enjoys immunity. Now, this is where the conflict arises because the judiciary has argued that since 2009 it has an order to this government reopen this old money laundering case against the president. It's a case that uh, it unfolded in Switzerland. The court wants this government to write to Swiss authorities saying reopen the case. The government is going on arguing that the president enjoys immunity. This is where uh, in a sense, the conflict will be. Will the court grant more time to the Prime Minister? Remember, this is the Prime Minister they've described as a dishonest man earlier. They've issued him a contempt of notice. Anything could happen. This is a day of reckoning. But the Prime Minister of Pakistan clearly trying to put on a strong political face, flanked by at least 40 top leaders of his civilian government as helicopters hover over the Supreme Court of Pakistan. And the world media... A uh, chocker block fills uh, the court from inside and, of course, a global eye on what happens next to this story. Right, Barkha, that so as you're saying that Prime Minister Gilani doesn't have much of a choice but uh, to strike a conciliatory note. So would we see him apologizing to the Supreme Court? And if he does, what could the outcome of the Supreme Court be? 
Well, many people in the we've been speaking to here believe that the Prime Minister will have no option but to offer an unconditional apology. But the statement, the opening statement that the Pakistani Prime Minister made has essentially reached out uh, to the court and he respects the court. He could never even think of speaking against it. But as of now, it has not been an unconditional apology. In fact, instead, he has sought to present his opinion and say uh, and that and explain why uh, he did not write that letter to the Swiss authorities. Right, but Khadab, thanks very much for joining us uh, with an update on what's happening out there. It's a day of reckoning, as she says, uh, for the Pakistani government. Uh, Mr. Gilani walking up to the Supreme Court uh, facing that uh, contempt uh, uh, case and giving a well-thought-out uh, uh, statement to, to the Supreme Court saying that the world over the presidents enjoy immunity and the Pakistan constitution also gives that immunity to the president.